It's always a good thing. Okay. So um, Julie Griffin, Julie Griffin, or M uh, Melissa Robbins. Let's see if we lost Julie. Yep, I'm here. Can you see okay. me? Oh, yes, I see you now. <laughs> All right. Julie, why don't you tell us now about BioBlend? Sure. Let me share my screen real quick. Um, I think I need permission. Oh, maybe I got it. Here we go. Um, so my name is Julie Griffin and I'm the BioBlend Career Coach here at Johnston Community College in North Carolina. Um, I'm joined today with uh, our department chair in biotechnology, Melissa Robbins, and our associate vice president of business, industry, logistics, and transportation, Brian Worley. Um, you'll hear more about them as we move through the slides. Uh, we actually have two awards. We have our original, what we lovingly call our BioBlend 1.0. Um, Brian Wardley was on the team that wrote the proposal back in 2018. It was awarded in 2019, um, integrating biotechnology and applied engineering to meet emerging advanced technological workforce needs. And then um, most recently, we applied to expand BioBlend um, to take the, the good pieces, to change the bad pieces and expand and offer to all students um, some of the aspects of BioBlend. And that um, proposal was recently approved and is titled Expanding a Multi-Skilled STEM Technician Pipeline to Meet um, Industry Needs. So we're really excited about that. Um, again, our key award contacts are Brian Worley, Principal Investigator of, of BioBlend 1.0, uh, Melissa Robbins, who's the Principal Investigator of BioBlend 2.0, and then um, myself as Co-Principal Investigator of 2.0. A little bit about our labor market. Um, for my friends, you know who you are on the West Coast, we're coming for you. According to JLL, the Raleigh-Durham area is listed as the number fourth life science cluster in the United States. And I feel like there may be some movement on that in the future based on the news, <laughs> weekly news. But I'm sure you all are feeling that as well with these companies uh, moving to your area. So there's definitely a strong need um, in our area. We are in Johnston County, but we border Wake County. Um, and so Wake and Durham, Kind of make up the research triangle area or the Raleigh Durham area and so we have a lot of crossing over of county lines. Uh, our, our site that hosts the biotechnology training is actually located in Clayton, North Carolina, which is probably less than 10 miles from the Wake County border. Parts of our county are very rural and then we have some urban overflow. Um, according to the North Carolina Biotech Center, we are we have the potential to add 5,000 new biopharmaceutical manufacturing positions by 2024. And our site in Clayton is actually located within a mile of both Griffles and Novo Nordisk. And that was strategic. Novo Nordisk actually donated the land. Um, and the, between those two companies, there's projected to add 1,000 new technician positions by 2027. So they need technicians and we are really trying to help them fill those positions as I know that you all are as well. Um, the goals for BioBlend 1.0, the first one was to create and implement a unique curriculum certificate that integrates biomanufacturing with applied engineering. That was actually uh, the biotechnology students are uh, the cohort that we have are currently taking a maintenance course an electrical wiring course out of applied engineering and the applied engineering students that move into maintenance technician roles are currently taking biowork certification courses similar to the base certification you may be familiar with. We found that approximately 50% of our applied engineering students were moving into maintenance tech positions in biopharmaceutical manufacturing, uh, which, which prompted the addition of that certificate. Um, also, uh, as part of BioBlend 1.0, the students receive career coaching. Um, they also have internship opportunities and we facilitate many networking events as you'll see in some of the comments from some of the students. 
Um, the third goal was to provide a hands-on education, uh, training in a simulated drug manufacturing environment. That was our Delta V, that is our Delta V training that we've offered only to the BioBlend cohort students uh, for now for BioBlend 1.0, and we're going to expand that for 2.0. So that distributed control system Delta V training um, is, is part of the BioBlend co uh, program. Just a visual of the overlap prior to BioBlend, um, students in bioprocess technology received the BioWork certification, and those in applied engineering took the ELC 117 and MNT 110. There was no crossover. So now the students in the cohort, uh, the BioBlend cohort, it doesn't matter whether they're applied engineering or bioprocess technology, all have internship opportunities, all have the opportunity for Delta V certification, all take the ELC 117 and MNT 110 and the BioWork certification course. A little bit of data for the first cohort. Our goal was to recruit 15 students. We recruited 17 and we've retained 14. These students, um, four of them graduated in the fall of 2021. 50% uh, of the 14 are employed. We have a few students employed that are going to graduate in May. Um, 10 students will be graduating in May and are on track to do so. 100% of the cohort received the Delta V certification. 93% of the cohort obtained their BioWork certification. And then 10 students have participated in internships so far from cohort one. Uh, four of the students actually found employment prior to uh, internships last summer and, for, and forfeited the opportunity due to working in industry. Um, cohort two, we've recruited 16 students, 14 are currently participating. Uh, we're doing this with a no cost extension. We had some funds extra, uh, some extra funds due to very limited travel during COVID. So we were able to bring on another cohort um, that wasn't originally part of our, our initial proposal and move them through uh, the program as well, offer the program to them. Just a few comments from some of the students. We sent out completer surveys to students who had completed BioBlend, obtained their degrees, and were working in industry. So these were the fall graduates. And just a little bit of feedback about what, um, what they think was most important for them to become a successful employee. We do offer more opportunities to network. Um, part of that, I have to give credit to the folks at City College of San Francisco for being so generous with their speed networking resources. We have implemented that. We just held our second speed networking event uh, Friday, March 25th, uh, and increased the number of employers and number of students that attended. So that was nice, or in industry representatives, excuse me. So that was a really nice opportunity um, for the BioBlend students as well. Just a few of our, our interns, um, the, the outside pictures are students at Novo Nordisk, and the middle picture is a student at um, Griffles uh, doing a little bit of welding. The individuals at Novo Nordisk were all dual enrollment students. They were all completing their high school diploma and their college degrees at the same time. They committed five years to JCC and will graduate with their associates um, in uh, in applied engineering, associates in science and applied engineering, and their high school diploma at the same time. And they are almost there. Delta V, um, I don't know that I have enough time to show the video, so I'm gonna move past it. Uh, Leslie Eisenhower presented on our project in December of 2019. Hopefully these slides will make it to everyone in attendance. Um, there were a lot of questions about Delta V, and I'm gonna talk just a little bit about the lessons learned and what we'd like to change moving into BioBlend 2.0. So if you have any questions about Delta V, let me know and hopefully you'll, you'll have access to the video as we move forward. Few of the lessons learned. Um, one, uh, you all are probably seeing it every day as well is automation, 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 which has made us change one of our blended courses for all to automa automation. Um, students, we are still trying to identify whether or not uh, MNT 110, the intro to maintenance course or the electrical wiring course will be 
um, required for the bioprocess technology students, but we have added automation, which is also a part of the current applied science, uh, applied engineering associates degree. So those students would already take the automation course ATR 112. And if they pass, they also receive a FANUC certification. So they get that third party credential. So that's one of the, the lessons that we learn, we've learned along the way. Um, we've also learned that Delta V cloud-based licenses are very expensive and they are hard to sustain. Um, we were paying, I think, close to $46,000 a year for 16 or 17 licenses. Um, so we did a little research. We toured BTEC at North Carolina State University in Raleigh, um, talked to several folks, and we have some plans. Um, Melissa, did you wanna talk now a little bit about what our plans are uh, with Delta V going forward? Sure. <clears throat> so. Um, as Julie was saying, the sustainability um, was really a problem in the first grant, especially with Delta V. Um, being an Emerson product, we have to go through Emerson for those licenses, and that was very um, costly. So we actually are looking into getting um, the servers to host it ourselves. So we will still purchase um, from Emerson. But instead of it being cloud based where they host it for us, um, we will actually have it on site and that will be um, about the same price, but it'll be a one time fee um, for the hosting and um, the servers and everything that we will need to have it on site. This will also allow us to be able to um, ha possibly have a virtual option, um, depending on we're, we're having to still iron out like through our um, college, the security aspect of it, but we will have the potential to have virtual options to teach it virtually, um, as well as have the option to connect Delta V to an actual piece of Delta V equipment, for example, a bioreactor. So then instead of it just being cloud-based and virtual, the students will actually be able to go to a computer that's located at JCC and manipulate valves and actually see them operate a piece of equipment. Thank you, Melissa. Um, also, we heard a lot of feedback at the beginning of the ELC 117 course and the end of the course from students in bioprocess technology. I won't say griping, but maybe a little griping. Uh, but those same students are now working and have come back and said that the schematics they learned in that ELC 117 course are utilized frequently and transferred over into reading their PNIDs in a biopharmaceutical manufacturing plant. So that's something as we consider what to do with the MNT 110 and the ELC 117, we have to figure out how to incorporate some diagram reading schematics or keep the ELC 117 course. Uh, we've also realized that we need stronger relationships with local uh, middle and high schools we need that pipeline. We can't fill the positions with the current, current students we have. So we're really working hard to develop those relationships and have some plans for the future as well. Um, also, there's been feedback from industry as well as students preference towards longer paid internships as opposed to 40 to 48 hour unpaid internships. We're looking at incorporating those into a class where students would get credit and possibly putting them over like a summer internship um, course. We also have realized that we need to find the underemployed populations to meet industry uh, hiring needs. Again, we can't do it with our with the number of students we currently have. And so this all led to us in expanding BioBlend 1.0 and um, in into 2.0, which which prompted the proposal in the fall. Melissa, did you want to say a few words about the expansion of 2.0 as principal investigator? So the main thing we noticed was um, we, we wanted to make it available to all students. So not having just a limited cohort. So that was our main thing is how can we take what's working well from BioBlend and have all of our students have the opportunity to participate. So we are going to be redesigning some of our curriculum. Um, we've already got the automation class um, approved by the system office to be included in the biotech side um, for the bioprocess technology students. So we'll be incorporating that as um, a standard class in our curriculum for our um, associates in applied science and bioprocess technology. 
And then also we are going to embed the internships into one of our classes that's already part of our curriculum so that the students are getting course credits. It'll be kind of like a work-based learning um, instead of just something they're doing in their own time. And then they'll have some other aspects of that course as well, like showing what they learn in the internship and being able to show application of what they do during their internship. And then again, Delta V will be available to all students by embedding that in a class as well. Um, and then the other big part of the Bible in 2.0 is including neurodiversity, um, specifically focusing on students with autism. Um, all of our industry partners in some way have increasing diversity as part of their plans. So it really aligned with what our industry was looking for as well. So I think we get into that a little later, um, but that was the big goals for BioBlend 2.0. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, so as, as Melissa mentioned, uh, increasing neurodiversity is a big component of BioBlend 2.0. And uh, when we started to look at the data and the number of students that we had on site at JCC, we had 20 students identified um, through our accessibility services as having uh, autism. Our, our nearest local community college, WIC Tech, has 130 uh, plus students identified. Um, we have some activities we hope will boost this, and we have a goal of increasing the number of students on campus with autism to 50. Um, these are, uh, as Melissa mentioned, our, our local um, industry partners also have goals to increase diversity. They, they both um, sign letters of support. Of course, legally, they have to uh, ensure reasonable accommodations, but they did include that in their letter, letter of support and encourage staff to participate in autism awareness um, training that we will provide as part of this proposal. We've already started conversations with industry partners uh, regarding uh, supporting individuals with autism and alternative internship opportunities through the state of North Carolina for students that aren't necessarily coming through JCC at this point. Maybe they already have degrees. Um, so we've already started those conversations. Um, along the way, too, we've also learned that individuals with autism that have two-year degrees or any college degrees are much less likely to be employed than individuals with autism with no degree. Um, so that, that's really reinforced that we're moving in the right direction. Also, um, our, our PI for BioBlend 1.0 saw a wonderful workshop years ago regarding a program um, in in uh, California, I believe, College of the Canyons that had a program that was quite successful for individuals with autism. Uh, we had somebody at Novo Nordisk that had thought that they would like to kind of hire, um, figure out a way to hire individuals with autism in, into positions. So it just, the, the stars were aligning and this is the direction uh, we chose to go with BioBlend 2.0. Um, here are some of our partners. We have a wonderful partner, um, Teach, uh, here. It's in North Carolina, but they consult all over the world. Um, Teach Autism Program, um, Johnson County Public Schools, our local public school system, of course. You know, we even mentioned Griffles and Novo Nordisk. Um, and of course, the National Science Foundation is the funder. Uh, CAST it, um, are, are going to be providing some um, services and supports to us as well through this. We're really excited about that. I'm checking the time, making sure I'm staying on track. Just a few activities that we've already implemented and what we plan to do along the way. Um, Teach Autism Program offers a, a transition and employment uh, to transition program for students in, in high school, 16 to 21, could be just out of high school as well. It's a boot camp. They offer it at the local community colleges. And so we offered our space to host the first T-STEP course in February, 2022. So we started working on that a little bit earlier and we currently have our first class of, of T-STEP students. Um, there are nine of them right now at Johnson Community College and um, they have just started their internships too across campus, which is really important. Um, these students are learning uh, time management, uh, communication skills and part of their internship is to go through the activities that they go through in class to, to practice the skills um, learned during class. So that's really exciting. 
Um, part of the T-STEP program is they offer the intern uh, host supervisors some training. They do a one hour uh, virtual training with the supervisors. So we're creating awareness, understanding across campus. Um, some of the things that some of the activities we have in our timeline are to provide more staff and faculty training on autism. Um, Teach is going to come in and provide that and some uni universal design for learning uh, support as well in training professional development from CAST, um, autism specific training to our industry partners. Uh, we want to recruit students with autism into STEM certificate and degree programs. Melissa and I actually went into the T-STEP course last month and presented to two, of, two groups there and, and invited parents as well. Uh, we are going to uh, build an e-portfolio with CAST support um, and include that in the PTC 110, which will be our internship course uh, to kind of launch that and sample that. Um, we've built in uh, summer workshops for the career development counselors and the special populations coordinators and made them aware of that at a, as a, at a presentation earlier this week. Also in North Carolina, we have a Linkit program that's specifically designed for individuals with autism who have degrees, uh, associate's degrees, certificates and beyond all the way up through PhD. Um, that's my timer. <laughs> I've got to wrap it up. Um, and so we are already starting conversations with that in preparation of students exiting uh, JCC. Um, here's our contact information. Uh, if you'd like more information, all of us are, are more than willing to answer any questions. And we, we just love the collaboration. And we've had great colleges share information with us. So we, we really appreciate you all. And and are, are more than willing to share and offer up any, any um, feedback that we have on our, our program. Also, um, Brian, uh, did you wanna say anything I saw that you were able to, to join? Uh, I, uh, Julie, I just don't know how I can follow that up. You've done such a fantastic job. So uh, no, I don't have anything to add, but thank you for doing such a wonderful presentation on our BioBlend 1 and BioBlend 2, thank you. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> So I guess, um, thank you all so much, Sandy. Is this where I stop sharing and um, you take over? Okay, okay. Wow, well, thank you both. Those are just amazing talks. It's really, I, I love all the zombie stuff, Deborah. And hearing about the neurodiversity in biotech and uh, that's really fantastic. The work you're both doing, it's really great. Um, there is, uh, before I forget, Linnea reminded me that I should let everybody know that there are going to be some pretty cool events happening this summer with professional development. Um, you can find them all at, at our website, innovatebio.org. Um, July 25th, there's a session at High Tech on developing a biotech summit and a workshop by a company called Scientific Bioprocessing. There's an advanced PCR workshop June 27th through 30th. I guess I should have put these in order in St. Louis. And um, we are having a virtual antibody engineering hackathon, August 8th through 11th. So if you want to learn more about bioinformatics and molecular modeling with SARS-CoV-2 and antibodies, um, you know, check it out and uh, sign up for information. We'll be sending out more information about the application process and stuff soon. So you can find all that at innovatebio.org. And now for some of the questions, um, I saw Andrea had a question for you, Deborah, that she also really likes the creative approach in your summer programs and is wondering if you've partnered with the Science Academy of South Texas. I have not. And actually, um, I will admit, Andrea and I have been direct messaging during it. Like, oh, I've not heard of these guys. So I, I checked them out. They're actually not in our area. I mean, they're in the area, but it's not part of our official area that we cover. It's, that's under South Texas College. So I think I would uh, get in trouble if I tried to go work with those folks. <laughs> okay. But well, thank um, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One thing also, I put the link to our evaluation form in the chat, and we'd all really appreciate it if you get a chance before you leave to copy that link and fill that out because that really helps us report to our funders and figure out what you know we should do next so uh, anybody else other questions let's let's hear them can i do, i forgot to say one thing and that um like our summer camp and and those kind of materials um i'm preparing them to go up on at ate central on our site there but i'm happy to share those if anybody's interested just let me know i can you know, send, 
I'll send you whatever we have. <laughs> yeah, and Deborah, I think I might suggest you look at cubes as a yeah as another. Since cubes actually, well, anyway, we can talk about that. Yeah, a bit later. yeah, I'm I'm on there. One of the other sites I don't have time to go visit. Right. More questions. I think. Um. Oh, actually, I have a question for you, Julie. So, with your uh, speed networking, I'm really glad you implemented that because I I sat in on um one of Karen and Goli's sessions with that, and it was just really in incredible. And talked to some of the students. How? What do your students think about it? Oh, we're getting great. We're getting great feedback. It's just amazing. And a, and, a, and a special shout out to Karen for for just generously sharing all of our information. We pretty much had everything we needed to launch it. We just had to change the name of the school <laughs> and maybe a few of the biotech questions to make it a little more relevant to our area. But she really, I've seen a few presentations as well. And then Karen was very generous with um, the information and, and, and had several meetings with me after. So yeah, we just held our second. It, it was great. And Karen, I went to one suggest though, one suggestion yeah. I did want to make is last year we held it on Zoom. This year we held it on Teams and I would strongly suggest you stick with Zoom if you're considering doing it. And Karen gener also generously shared the link to her speed networking materials here as well. And I believe she would even let people sit in on her sessions. Am I right, Karen? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Actually, we have one literally later today. Um, <laughs> organizing it, and we um, I, I'm on a, a project that just got funded uh, with Linnea and Pornima um, and Julie uh, to keep moving this forward um, for more colleges. So, if anybody's interested in doing one, let me know. I'd be happy to let you know. It's nice to sit in though first because it's it's a little intimidating when you look at all the preparation with without having seen it firsthand. But when you sit in, it's like, oh, OK, I got this. It's just a lot of breakout rooms. It's a Google spreadsheet, yeah. <laughs> yep. So more questions. Well, I, I have one. Delta V. So how, how common is that in the in industry? So I'll take that one. Um, in our local industry for biopharmaceuticals, Griffles and Novo, they use it very heavily. Um, we've also found out, in addition to other pharmaceutical companies, um, even some in the Wake County area, that there are other industries as well. Um, we had a student that worked for Pepsi-Cola, and they use it, um, and we found out it's really big in the meal and grain industry. Basically, any kind of um, manufacturing that involves manipulating valves, turning things on and off, then it can be used as a digital um, distributed control system for that. So I know when I work in sampling, we used it all the way to the actual manufacturing. So it's it's a wide, widely used. Um, Emerson does make it very specific to the industry. So what we teach is kind of a broad overview. But um, for us here in our area, it's widely used. That's interesting. I can imagine with all the um, the new biomanufacturing with synthetic biology and um, making uh, lab grown meat and stuff like that. Maybe there's there are applications there as well. Do you think? Yes, I could definitely see that. And and another thing, we haven't really um, had students from this, but our area, North Carolina in general, is very big in um, microbreweries. Mm. Um, and they use Delta V a lot as well for because it's basically very transferable with the fermentation process and the culturing and um, all of that. So they use Delta V as well a lot in this area. Oh, neat. And microbreweries are all over the country, everywhere, rural, city. That, that's, a, that's a great thing to know. So other questions? Okay. Well, um, I'd like to thank Julie and Melissa and Brian and Deborah for joining us and everybody else for joining us here today. It was really great to hear what you're working on. And I hope, um, I hope all of you can join us next week to hear about ag biotech 
and hear about biomanufacturing at Del Mar College. Looking forward to it. And I hope you all have a great weekend. Thanks.